To finish the neat things in SOPs that I found in H18, two techniques that have to do with grouping in a way. One is the group expand. So I'm gonna drop down a pig head again, call this one group underscore expand. Let's dive in there and uncheck add shader. So I have my blank pig head there. I'm gonna subdivide this two times and add a group to the subdivide. So I wanna group the points here. Let's call this one GRP for group. And I wanna group it by a bounding region and say I want to group stuff that's up here on the ear. So I'll scale back the size of my sphere, hit space in two to go on the upwards view, just move my sphere over to the ear, hit space in three to go on my front view and move that up. So I selected a bunch of points at the ear. So space and one to go back into my perspective viewport. And now let's drop down the new sub called group expand. And this does a few neat things. Let's select our point group called GRP, select points here and go to our tool handle. And you can see this is my GRP point group. And you might say that's not a big difference from what I had originally. Well, it kind of is. Let's increase those steps here a bit. So you can see what that is doing is it is successively filling all adjacent points of that group. And even more so, it can output a step attribute. So when we highlight the group expand and go to the geo spreadsheet here and highlight the step attribute, each point knows at which step in the process it was added to the group. Or differently speaking, each point now knows how much steps it is away from the original group. So that's kind of a distance measure, a distance along the mesh that is. So that's kind of related to our distance along GeoSOP that we talked about previously. Not only does it do that, but it can also take into account connectivity, for example, by UV islands. And my original pig head here has UV islands. So if I check connectivity constraint here, you can see the group is restricted to that UV island, which is covering this ear up here. You could use any other attribute like a piece attribute or a name attribute, for example, to restrict that as well. Also, we can restrict or drive this expansion by a normal. So for that, we first need point normals on our mesh. So let's drop down a normal sop, wire that in after the subdivision and set the normals to point normals. And then down here in the group expand, let's check restrict by normals. And this is really, really sensitive to those areas below here, where you can dial in how much the normals are to deviate from the original normals in order to be a member of that group. So you can dial in the spread of the group really finely here, although it's a bit sensitive in the lower area. So you might want to use the value letter to dial those in correctly. Not only can you restrict all this by normals, you can also use this to flood fill a selection that's connected. So if you have some procedural setup that only outputs a certain point or just a few sub points on a connected mesh and you want to select the overall mesh, what you can do is just check flood fill connected geometry and it will select all the points that are connected through a mesh with the original points in your group like this. And finally, you could use a collision group. That's another group that you create. And this will then form a boundary against which the growth, the expansion of that group will stop and will not propagate through.